So, um, our first and only review today will be for the anime series Claymore. Uh, Claymore, which is the name, it's a Scottish word there for big sword, great sword. Um, as you say, so it's a Scottish word there. That's why they have that name. And it's, you know, for these kind of warrior women here who are called Claymores in the series, uh, even though they don't refer to themselves as Claymores, that's just something that the human characters in the show give them. Uh, what they kind of work for, they just call themselves the, they work for the organization, um, as they say. So it's kind of these warrior women who are half human, half Yoma, uh, which are like these demon creatures that you see in this world. Um, they're meant to go ahead and, you know, kill a lot of these demon creatures, go from town to town. Each of them have their own section of this world where they kind of take care of it. They protect it. Um, and they're responsible for going to each town and, you know, slaying these creatures. And then some are more powerful than the others. You have your garden variety Yoma there that you see in this world. But they also you'll see much stronger demons, which are called uh, awakening uh, kind of creatures there, which are more evolved, advanced, much more stronger there. Um, now, with these kind of warrior women that you see here, each have a name and then also a number to identify their strength level going from one all the way to 47 uh, that you see. And we have a main character by the name of Claire, who is dead last. She is number 47. Um, and they very much treat the rankings very seriously. You know what I mean? If you're in the single digits, that means like you're a real badass if you're in the single digits there. Um, you know, as opposed to other people there, like if you're in the thirties or forties, like you're basically treated like a nothing almost. It's like, you're pretty weak there. Um, red shirts. Yeah. Red shirts basically there. Um, also a lot of these women, uh, maybe you'll get kind of confused there about maybe the way some of them look. Um, you know what I mean? Cause a lot of them sometimes have the same haircut and same kind of style there. Um, you know, but sometimes it kind of helps a lot of the more, uh, ones that have a lot more dialogue as you mentioned before like you know there's some characters like okay you can kind of recognize them a little bit uh but yeah they treat the rankings very seriously there they each have the, also their kind of own emblem um as well there especially with the single digits they have their own emblems there um and even some are so strong and some so well known uh that they get their own nickname you know uh, elena the quick sword um you know for their own like special technique that they can use and the powers that they kind of have are very much like almost like vampire-ish type powers, like very super speed, super strength, uh, endure, you know, uh, durability, uh, things like that. But you also, they're not invincible. You do see like there are, like when you, it comes across a very strong opponent, it can be very dangerous for them. They can die. And some of them do die in pretty horrible ways as, this, uh, as you see in this series. Um, and if you watch this, uh, you said that it very much was very much inspired by something like Berserk. Uh, there, you definitely kind of see that. Um, you want to touch on that a little bit more there, uh, Sage? Yeah, I mean, I can, uh, you know, I haven't read the Claymore manga myself yet, uh, which I, I do plan to check it out. But you can see in the pages of the artwork, it, it has a very, very similar style to Berserk. I don't know how much that translates to the anime's art style, but if you go and look at pages of the comic, you can really, really see kind of the shading and the line work is very reminiscent of berserk yeah um kind of see let me pull up some image from berserk here uh manga let's see so yeah you see that there um really yeah. similar shading styles especially the dark kind of shading style there that you kind of see there uh yeah kind of very much see that uh with that kind of style I don't want to scroll too much because I want to show something on camera there, but uh, yeah. gotta be careful with uh, Berserk here. Uh, yes, but yeah, uh, yeah, you kind of have that here um, with kind of. So I kind of see that very much inspired. And then these demon creatures there, these kind of very, you kind of see some of kind of the same kind of designs there that you may see in uh, Berserk with the demon kind of creatures, the way they can kind of change and morph into all these kind of different things. Like one of one demon isn't really going to look like another demon, especially the awakening demons. Uh, some of the lower level Yoma are kind of going to look like they're going to look like pretty much the same. But when you get to like the other top level people, they're not really going to look the same. They're going to have their own unique abilities. And being half Yoma, uh, these Claymores do run the risk of fully transforming into a monster. And you see that with one of the main antagonists of the series, 
a woman by the name of uh, Priscilla here, uh, who went uh, full, uh, Yoma, went full into her monster side, uh, which is kind of a lot of these run the risk of because they draw from this, uh, they call it what is the Yuki energy they draw from there. Yeah, I think that's what they called it. Uh, they draw from that energy uh, that allows them to kind of heal quickly or, you know, increase their attacks. Uh, but when they do that, they draw the risk of, you know, not being able to fight back the monster there. Um, and they kind of leads them to going full monster. You saw that with the Priscilla character who was once a former Claymore who just went full monster and went on a rampage there and killed a lot of other Claymores, especially a Claymore that was very close to a character that we follow our uh, main uh, protagonist here, Claire, a character named of Teresa there who she killed her. And then that kind of sets Claire off as a young girl on her path to becoming a Claymore and then looking for revenge against the one, ho uh, one uh, horn demon, as they call the Priscilla character there. Um, Sage, what are your thoughts on Claymore there? Well, it's interesting. I, you know, I think the elevator pitch that I heard for this, the show is like Buffy meets the Witcher meets invasion of the body snatchers. Uh, which I can kind of see all those things in there. And I think, I think what you have here is something that is, it is pretty interesting and, and cool on its face. Um, I really like the, the whole, uh, the almost, they're almost like female witchers. I feel like the, the Claymore, uh, the idea that they can kind of turn into these things that they hunt. Um, and it, it kind of sets up a good mystery of, well, if they turn into these things and that's what they're hunting, what's the origin point there's some really interesting like how exactly are they made these these characters being made into these things because they imply that they all kind of maybe started as human at one point uh there, there's some cool stuff going on here but also i think that i think that the show runs into a couple issues when you know you tell me if you felt the same way but one thing is that i i felt like it was a little too uh overly expositional and and i felt like it was mainly because it kind of kept repeating the same exposition uh there was a lot of times when characters would ask either the same question or someone would explain something that's been explained kind of over and over and over did you feel that way um so initially early on so you saw at the beginning of the series you have claire there and runs into of course like any anime you're going to have the child maybe character and then, you know, that's the audience avatar character to have you explain this world to. And she explains everything like kind of like with the whole Claymores and the organization and, you know, I mean, how Claymores fight and everything like that. And then as it continues, um, there's stuff that because of Claire, who's fairly new into this world of being uh, one of these kind of warrior women here, part of this organization, um, the stuff that, you know, she doesn't fully know yet or you know what i mean that she kind of learns along the way but i will say yeah i mean i think the emblem thing like what they explain like each person has their own emblem which uh and like this emblem is supposed to is connect to this specific person um i guess who's supposed to remember all those emblems i mean i don't know maybe you know but they do kind of bring that up quite a bit uh there um i mean it does help because like i said everybody does kind of there's a lot of these women do look like so it kind of <laughs> it does help that they have these things but I, I do well, kind I of felt, see that a little bit. Well, I felt like even in the last couple episodes, the Claymore were still saying to each other, be careful, or you might turn into, you might mute it. Like, still kind of explaining some of these basic concepts that have been clear since the first couple of episodes. And they're, like, still bringing up the rules as if as if we it's the first time we're hearing them. Mm, yeah. And you see that, you know, sometimes when these, uh, when these women... When they turn, it's not always the end of the world uh, there. They can turn back. I think even in this, this scene is from the show where one of them um, gets tortured mm -hmm. and kidnapped here. Um, and they actually, you know, you talk about the origin of them. And then it was this scene uh, where they, yeah, a group of Claymores get kidnapped, tortured by this uh, other demon who was a former Claymore herself who went full uh, demon there. Um, and now kind of just enjoys, you know, converting other Claymores into being demons will torture them to the point where they convert there. Um, and you see, like, each Claymore has their own version of their demon form that kind of comes out. Uh, very nice artwork, by the way. Uh, very love the artwork. The, the detail there is really great. 
Um, I almost think the show doesn't really do it justice how well it kind of looks. There. It doesn't, honestly. Um, but yeah, they they kind of do that there, and they're able to kind of sometimes if they're able to fight it enough, revert back to their human form there. And you see kind of the process you'll see in the show of how they actually make uh, them into the creatures there. It's like someone like cut a, like cut their chest open and then put this kind of thing inside of them and, you know, stitch them back up. It was like pretty grotesque um, there to look at there. Uh, you know, and there's even a scene there with the character Teresa uh, where she's like, okay, you think you want me? You know, <laughs> here you go. You know what I mean? Like she shows this big line, you know, scar down her chest there. Um, so you kind of have that. Um, yeah, I don't. I almost think that some of the some of the kind of the animation doesn't even do the artwork justice here. What do you think about some of the animation in the series? I felt like the animation was often just okay. Oh, uh, Sage dropped out there again. Uh, but yeah. Uh, oh, you dropped out. Uh, again. Yeah, again. Can you re- uh, go back to what you said at the beginning? Yeah, uh, I was. I was saying. Um, I. I think the animation is serviceable. Like I wouldn't look at it and say it's 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 bad necessarily, but I never felt really wowed by anything in it or or kind of super impressed by any of the visualizations. Whereas when I look at the book and some of those panels, I, I really feel like I mean, I'm like wow, that's like unique and I have not seen that before and the style is really great. Um I don't think like I think there's a art style the show has that isn't bad for sure. I think I, that I think seems to work, but it just doesn't seem to have a lot of fluid motion. Even during fight scenes, it's a lot of like let me make one kind of movement, and then the camera freezes on it, and then we cut, and then there's like another movement in the next shot, and then let's freeze on that, and you know, kind of a lot of that stuff. Yeah. There's a lot of moments where you'll see, like, you know, traditional, like, I, I guess this started in samurai movies, I guess, where a character will make a slash, and then it, and the villain will go like, oh, you think you got me? And then he's like, oh, wait a second, and he'll split in half or something like that, yeah. you know what I mean? He'll start talking, and then all of a sudden he turns into a pizza, um, <laughs> you know, so there's that. So there's a lot of that, um, and this is a big action scene that happens in the show. And a lot of the action in the show is, it's okay, it's not some of the best I've seen, um, you know, when you talk about you know, kind of maybe it's unfair to compare this because this anime came out in. Uh, let me see when this anime came out. I think it's two thousand seven. Yeah, two thousand seven was the first air date for this. Um, so maybe something like we see action like J- uh, Jujutsu Kaisen. You know, really impressive with a lot of the stuff it does there with the kind of action. Here, it's a lot of like quick movements with the sword and then you know doing a lot of stuff and then them like you said speeding up, slow down, posing and then slashing their swords there. It's okay. I mean, look at Spike's combat in 1997 in Cowboy Bebop. That had far more fluid movement. Yeah, they had far more movement there. Um, And then uh, they, you know, some of the sword battles, like when they're, you can see a little bit of it going on because sometimes they will match up with just the swords where they'll kind of clang swords. Not that interesting there, I think, when they start going a little bit harder and using powers there. That's when it starts to get more interesting. When they actually do more of a sword battle, it's just kind of like, eh, it's, it's okay. Um, I would say there. Um, yeah. What did you think about the characters in here? People like Claire, people like Teresa, you know. Teresa was probably my favorite. I actually think my favorite stretch of the show was that flashback arc between episodes like four and eight or four and nine or so. Um, where we've gone, we go back, we see Claire as a little girl, and we see how she kind of got inducted into being a Claymore, and the Teresa being the Claymore that rescued her when she was a child. And that that whole story arc, I thought that was working really well, because let me tell you, the thing that, that I think held this show back the most for me was Rocky. I found that little boy to be so annoying. <laughs> uh, he just... I. It's, it was it was just him going Claire Claire over and over again in situations where either he's obviously just putting himself in the way, but he also I feel like there is not enough time to develop these characters having an attachment to each other before he is in like episode two he's like obsessed with her and. I just I never bought into that relationship because I felt like he never had more characterization than just following her around like a like a puppy. Yeah, I mean, he kind of almost you almost forget about him 
uh, because she kind of leaves them behind because she has to do this mission, and then you know, I mean, they kind of get separated. Um, That's part of the show, leaving them behind. <laughs> you know, where they kind of get separated, and she kind of has to go with another group there to to. I think that's when they do the voracious eaters there in the mountain. Uh, is where mm-hmm. she kind of leaves them behind, which is another classification of demon there that they end up fighting. They're much more dangerous. Um, yeah, I almost forgot that he was actually there, uh, <laughs> almost in the show. Uh, and when you, because with that stuff, I mean, you know, Claire kind of goes her training arc there that you see, where she kind of learns to become a little bit stronger. Um, she learns somewhat of the quick sword technique there afterwards there's a string of episodes there where you kind of see what happens there when she kind of goes one thing but you didn't did you like when rocky was a little bit by himself and he was training and he was learning to use a sword and doing that stuff no (laughs) (laughs) i I really didn't i didn't feel like anything was happening with him as a character like he practiced his sword a little bit but there was nothing uh, there's just there was nothing to make him him likable to me he just, I don't know, he just had this one-minded, where's Claire? Where's Claire? I gotta make sure I know where Claire is. Where's Claire? What's what's Claire doing? And it's just, it was, it was just, that was all he ever was for me. Yeah. Well, I mean, Claire, I guess, was, as a little girl, I mean, you could say she was also the same way with Teresa, you know? She was, but it, to me, the way that they, at least, it, and it could just be a matter of the animation, but the way that the characters are drawn, she looked like she might have been like 11 or 12. And mm. Rocky looks like he should be 15, 16. And I'm like, you are too old to be acting like that. <laughs> uh, I guess I could kind of see that a little bit there. Um, and Claire, as a, like, as a protagonist, I mean, you see some of the other Claymores that you see in this, uh, in this world. And a lot of them have personalities. A lot of them have very distinct personalities. You see some are arrogant. Some are uh, very cocky. Um, you know, some are a little bit more serious. Um, some are, you know, enjoy killing, enjoy, you know, killing demons. Like there's the one character who was the number four, uh, who I don't know her name. Uh, I forgot her name. Was it Elena? Uh, in the flashback or in the present day? In the present day. The one the she was fighting. Day. I think it was um, a, Elena. I want right? to say Sophia. Sophia? Was that the name? Okay. Um, but yeah, so you had that character. No, who... Ophelia. 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 Okay. That was uh, yeah, yeah. She was the one with the elf ears, kind of like the elf. Yes. Yeah. Uh, there and so you have her who you know she kind of very much enjoys the killing, enjoys slaughtering the demons, the blood, um, all that kind of stuff. Um, and this is the character. Uh, let's see, right here. Yeah. So this is the character, and also a lot of them are very pale, uh, as you can kind of see. They're very much almost very like pale. vampires. Very much like kind of yeah vampires there, um, and she kind of has her or own witchers, tech- witchers, um, and she has kind of her own technique with her sword where she can kind of wrap her sword around people and then cut them there with that kind of special technique that she uses. Um, what did you think about Claire? Did you think Claire was a little too dull, a little too boring um, in the show there? Yeah, I I did kind of feel that she. I, the thing is, is once we got a certain chunk in like maybe halfway through I started to see the kind of revenge story of it kind of come out of her a little bit more and I, I, I felt like she started to kind of once the, once she was focusing on that and Rocky wasn't really around at all anymore I felt like there was a little more personality started to come out but especially in the first half I feel like she she feels like a stone wall and she it's like she's coming up and interacting with quite a few characters in the other Claymore that all have pretty memorable personalities or at least just feel like they're putting some sort of energy out there. And she, she does feel like, I don't know. She, she does kind of feel like a stone wall sometimes. Yeah. And I mean, it's understandable given her background, being a girl that, you know, was held hostage by the Yoma because some of these Yoma can infiltrate a lot of these towns and then kill these people there and then take human form. Um, and uh, so, yeah, sometimes you don't even know who's there. You just know that there are a lot of dead bodies showing up and they need Claymores to investigate this because they can actually sense who's a Yoma and who's not one and because of the aura um, of the creatures there. So she did have that kind of background where her f- whole family was killed by uh, the Yoma and then, you know, Teresa ended up saving her. Um, so that adds to that, I guess. And then she did watch Teresa be killed in front of her and then head cut off and 
all that. Um, so that could add to it. That, that definitely that background um, to things. But it was a little rough. I think she gets a little bit better as the show kind of continues on because she it's a little bit of more of the revenge stuff. And then she's driven by that um, and, and driven by nature to, to kill Priscilla, which gives her a little bit more personality. I think if we'd killed Rocky off in the first episode, you would have started <laughs> seeing that sooner. Yeah, but who else would we? I mean, we need somebody to explain things to, you know what I mean? Explain the whole world of the Claymores there. Well, if she's supposed to be the weakest and relatively new, then she just gets six. She could just have it explained to her by other Claymore that she comes across. I don't know. I, 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 or it's the townspeople as she goes on each job. Yeah, like townspeople like talking to each other. Like, yeah, you know, yeah. I mean, which you do kind of have that a little bit in the first with townspeople kind of going back and forth and talking to each other. It's like, yeah, you know. Um, yeah. And then there's some kind of these claymores that also are kind of uh, they can be awakened but still be in their human form. They can still draw that power there that kind of makes them a little bit different there. Um, I feel like the show does a lot of heavy foreshadowing with as much with Claire of like, you know, you're special, you're unique, you're different, you're you know, this, you're that. It's like, okay, I mean, I get it, they're the main character of the show. I mean, you don't have to <laughs> do, do that much of it uh there it's kind of implied already right yeah it's it's kind of implied already um and there's also i mean I, I, this is just kind of maybe just a tv thing i don't know but just also the last minute saves of like the character is just about to die the villain's just about to take care and then somebody else comes out i think that happens three or three two or three times in the show there where she's it just does. about to <laughs> where she's just about to die and then somebody comes to rescue her how do you feel about moments like that I think it's fine to do it once or twice, but once you start going three, four within a single season of TV, it's definitely too much. Yeah, and this has 26 episodes, uh, this does. So they never uh, end up have a proper ending for this. Um, they never did the kind of the, more of the proper adaptation there from the, from the monk. They, they rush kind of a boss fight in a volcano at the end, but it doesn't really wrap up like story, really. It's just like an action scene with the biggest monster. Uh, mm -hmm. I know that the the show is pretty, at least relatively faithful to the book for uh, for about twenty three episodes, and then those last three are just like completely not what happens in the book at all. Yeah, um, I mean, I I would like to see them kind of have a little bit more of a proper ending to you know what I mean for them to do that and wrap it up better. Um, because I mean, as an anime, I mean, what were kind of your thoughts on this? You know. You know, watching a lot more anime now for this and doing these reviews. What are kind of some of your thoughts there with Claymore of like some of the other animes we reviewed for this show? Well, you know, I think a lot of the stuff that we've reviewed on the show has been things that have been either original works, very faithful to their books, and often either finished products or kind of ongoing stuff. Uh, and this is one where, and I feel like there's kind of a whole category of shows that are out there like this, and I, Berserk is one of them, uh, where there's, it's a, it's a series that has an anime, but it's an anime that adapts a relatively small portion of the source material, and it doesn't really feel like a complete product in a lot of ways. Like, you watch this, and it sets stuff up and has, uh, you know, it has good stuff in it, too. Like, I, I did... I did like parts of this for sure, um, but it feels like it doesn't really knock any of the dominoes it's setting up over. It's it feels like it's just get, getting into those early sections where we're still learning about the world, and so as a story, it, I just don't I just don't think it feels all that satisfying. Mm. They set up some interesting stuff, um, and you know some of it kind of gets a payoff. They do some stuff with you know, the organization, you know, maybe something's rotten with the organization. Like you speak about, you know, these creatures of the Yoma, where did they come from? Especially also these more powerful people, you know, the awakened creatures. Like we mentioned the one, you know, I saw, I played a clip of this with the young girl that, that used to be a former Claymore that succumbed more to the, the demon side there. And now it's this ultra powerful, you know, abysmal, abysmal one, um, as they call it, you know, this creature seems very incredibly powerful. Um, so, you know, and there's also a male uh, awakenings there. At one point, they only thought that females could be the awake because obviously females were the only claymores. But at one point, you learn that maybe they had like male claymores and they gave up on that and they went to female. Um, and because they always mutated like right away, like they couldn't like stay in the like in between form or whatever. Yeah. Um, so you did have that. So. 
that was kind of more of like, and then also the person, you know, Claymores, they kind of get these also these missions to go on, you know, and then you have a person who does that, who kind of this kind of creepy guy in glasses and kind of looks like, uh, uh, what's that person's name from the Adams family? Uh, uh, the one with the light bulb. Uncle Fester. Uncle Fester, yeah, coming in with the fedora <laughs> and black and the glasses and everything like that, uh, who gives them even special missions there that you see. Um, and maybe there's kind of them to kind of beginning to question that a little bit of like, you know, is this, you know, what are we kind of doing here? And that's what kind of reminded me a little bit of Buffy, um, where, you know, you had the stuff with Buffy where they did the prequel, I mean, uh, the flashback episode where they explained the origin all the way back to the very first Slayer and how men, you know what I mean, basically put all this into this one girl to have them, this one girl fight these demons and everything like that. It was kind of like, yeah. it kind of reminded me a lot of that. What did you think about a lot of the lore in the show and how that's handled? Well, I, I, I do think, again, I think it's a really interesting start. Um, I do, again, I, I really feel like they over explain certain things where it's like, okay, no, I, we, we went over this a few times already. You don't have to tell me again. Uh, especially like, again, some of that comes back to Rocky and him going like, oh my God, she could, oh, she might turn into one of those. And I'm like, yes, no, you had this existential crisis like three times already this episode. Let's, let's move on, buddy. <laughs> Um, but I do think the lore of the world itself is actually pretty cool. I like the way that they, they mutate. I like the hierarchy of power of the creatures that they set up and they start to peel layers back. And then this, the organization most likely being probably one of the bigger antagonists of the story. But I, again, I do really feel like that the big battle in the, in the mountains that takes up kind of a good chunk of the last stretch of episodes that almost felt like the end of the first act of the story to me. And if, if generally the show had about a third of a book to work with, I think that's probably about right. I think we, we just only got to that first act. Um, so I, you know, I, I have to imagine this lore has so much more payoff to give, if, you know, if you go and read the book and get much further in. Yeah, uh, because that arc was, what, four parts? Uh, it was like four parts there. Yeah, four or five episodes. Something, yeah. something about that. Yeah. Do you wish you saw a little bit more of like how they, you know, kind of trained a little bit more of the Claymores, like how they kind of done all that, like the swords and the armor and how they trained? And I, I think that could be cool. I, you know, I wonder if that maybe is in is in the book and it just didn't make it into the show, or if it's if it's just later in the book and it would have been in the second season if the show had one. But. Yeah, yeah, I think it would have been nice to see because we it's it you know you're comparing it to things like the Buffy and the Witcher. I feel like in both Buffy and the Witcher, you get a pretty good sense of 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 that of the training and the weapons and kind of where they're where everything kind of comes from with them. Yeah, because in Buffy they have I mean she has Giles, who's her I forgot what the the term he is, but the Watcher. The, he comes from an organization that like assigns the Slayer each a new awakened Slayer some sort of mentor. Yes, yeah, the the Watcher there, except he doesn't have the big ass head. He's um, <laughs> so yes, yeah, so the Watcher there of, of yeah, the Slayer. So yeah, maybe if I mean, kind of seems like maybe the the people that give them the missions could be that maybe it'd be someone there detailing that because uh, you see that they yeah. give them equipment and you know when they get their armor clothes get ruined there, um, but. Almost kind of makes me think maybe I wanted to see a, a series with the Teresa character. Maybe, you know what I mean? I, I thought that, honestly, she, you know, <laughs> where she kind of goes there. And, and that arc, I thought at the beginning of the show was kind of one of the best things that was about the show is the beginning there, how she kind of forms this bond with this girl. Um, and Claymores, they do have a set of rules there uh, where they're like, okay, we don't hurt humans. You know, if we hurt humans, then, you know, we'll get excommunicated and then killed from the organization there if we do that. Um, you know, uh, so even and almost I think it's like a, a zero tolerance policy there. Like you can't hurt humans no matter what, even if they, you know, try to attack you, you can't do anything. So, you know, her bonding with this girl and then going like, you know, I mean, she just starts killing the bandits, guys. Um, so I thought, you know, that was kind of a really great stuff in there. And I almost was, you know, wanted to see, you know, maybe something with, you know, her there. Um, as interesting as they kind of set her up in those episodes. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. Any uh, kind of uh, final thoughts on this? Um, yeah, I mean, I, I just I think it's something that has a great base and a lot of potential, but fumbles the execution a little bit. I think I really want to try reading the book 
one because like you said the show kind of doesn't seem to do the the art style of the book justice uh and then also because it goes on for at least you know another two-thirds of story and i think giving it more potential to grow and kind of build on on what it is i think that you could have something really great with this um I think it just needs a little more time to flesh itself out and than what this first season or only season of the show was quite able to pull off. So I think I think I'd land around like a maybe like a high stream it. Mm, high stream it there. Um I kind of give it yeah, kind of a high stream it. I enjoyed it. It's a quick watch. Um, you know, we just had Black Lagoon, which we just reviewed, which I very much liked. I thought the writing in that was really good. I like the writing in that quite a bit um, in that series. I don't think it's on that level there. Um, if you want something maybe kind of like this, I don't know. I mean, you said you've seen the Berserk 97 series. Would you say it's kind of about the same there, about where this is? I, I think the Berserk series has much stronger writing, for sure, and better mm-hmm. voice acting. It, it, I think it suffers from being incomplete overall, just because they're, again, it, you know, that Berserk anime is about 10 books of a 42 currently 42 volume series so you're only getting this very small glimpse into it but i think what the part of it that is there is much stronger has much stronger characters has much stronger dynamics and developments and and also uh i watched claymore in the sub uh, i i tried watching like the first episode in the english dub uh, i thought the thought the subtitled version was a lot stronger Whereas that Berserk anime has uh, probably one of the better English dubs that I've ever seen. So, mm. yeah. You what uh, issue did you have with the dub in this? In claim, I just felt like the character, a lot of the actors, just felt very almost like they didn't feel super invested in the characters, like the personality. And I wonder if that's part of the issue with Claire. But I kind of felt that in, the, in even the subtitled version as well, with her at least. So. Mm. Yeah, and in the so in the dub here you have Stephanie Young, who does the English dub here, and she's done a lot of stuff, she, Spy uh, and Family here. Uh, she's done Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood. Uh, she was uh, Oliver uh, Armstrong in uh, Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood there. Okay. Um, and then Teresa, the English version there was uh, Christine Auten. Uh, I liked her voice. I thought she was good from the bits that I went and looked at. Um, and she's done things like Full Metal Panic, The Second Raid, uh, Samurai Gun. Um, she's done Bubblegum's Crisis, Tokyo 2040. She also done there. That's an interesting ass title. I kind of want to check out the. Just for the title. <laughs> uh, yeah. But she's uh, she's done that. Uh, she also did that movie uh, that was nominated. Uh, Sh- uh, Shinmu. Uh, she also did that one last year. Uh, that's animated television. Wasn't that turned into a movie that got nominated there for at the Crunchyroll, the Anime Awards? I I don't remember that one. It, oh no, I, you're probably right. But I think I'm thinking about something else. Maybe I'm thinking about okay. something else there. Oh, uh, that bubblegum. Uh, not to go on a tangent, but that bubblegum. How old is that? When is that from? Uh, it says here. So the this is the manga here. Uh, do 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 It says it came out in so original run was 1998 to 1999. Okay, so that is what I'm thinking of. The uh, the Tumblr Batmobile design is taken from that comic. Oh, uh, the Dark Knight tank design is 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 based on that uh, manga. Oh, I think you remember. I remember you telling me that. Yeah. So, oh, the anime series was uh from 1998 to 1999. There. Um. So this is it right here. This is the, a weird little coincidence. <laughs> The bubblegum, yeah, Tokyo here. Okay, that's what you have here. Uh, but yeah, um, so yeah, I would kind of give it a stream in there for Claymore. Um, the action scenes are fine, uh, nothing really too extra. I think the definitely the brutality is there, and you definitely feel that with these characters. I think they set up the power levels really well here, uh, with these characters that even though they do feel very powerful, they also can be very, very weak with even a new opponent kind of coming up here. These awakened kind of demons, which I thought was good, it's always a big threat there that they have to face there. Um, and there's even a point where all, you know, even two, three, four Claymores can even take on one of these things uh, that they need to join together and work together as a team to take these down a lot, which I thought was very good there. Um, I just think some of the parts are kind of weak with some of the 
and with Claire and then Rocky, you know, there of I don't know, I think the bond that they have is so super close so really quickly. I mean, over the course of like only a few episodes, they're already like it, it, that just made me hate him more. <laughs> You know, they're like inseparable after like a couple of episodes, you know what I mean? I mean, and also, I mean, it's rare that we ever see a lone wolf and cub story with a woman and a little boy. So usually the reverse where it's the older man and then the little girl. Usually we see that like Logan or Last of Us or, you know, something yep. like that that we see. Um, so that's kind of a different show. I've never seen I haven't really seen it too much where it's like, a you know, a, a woman and then a, uh, a boy there. Um, yeah. Yeah. So. I'm glad I checked it out. I'm glad I saw it there. Um, you know, it was something new. I haven't heard about the Claymore series before this, before it won uh, our poll. And people can vote in our poll there. If you go to Twitter.com, type in uh, Afternoon Tune, uh, people will be able to vote in our poll of what we should be reviewing next.